Hello, I'm back for almost the final video on our slime level build. We are building the slime level, if we all remember, from this concept piece. We are matching it to the architecture as a level designer would. We are thinking about adding more details than just boxes and rough shapes. We're thinking about architecture and getting the scale correct thinking about a basic mission. How do I entertain the player with something very simple? The goal is to turn, find the source of the slime, which we do in this level. And on my last video, we just did a quick walkthrough in the state of the level. So at this point, I've cleaned it up quite a bit, and I've basically finished it. We can turn off the slime. We have IGCs. We have more hints and little text. I improved my uh, newspaper IGC and soda bottle IGC so they uh, stand out in the level and they turn on and off appropriately. My texts turn on and off appropriately. I have conditions now, so you have to hit this button in the proper order after fixing the generator, which then allows you to turn on the door. I have warning audio telling you that you can't hit this door button without turning on the generator. It's not that specific, but you can figure it out. So let's just start walking through it and show the changes I've made. I won't go over all the changes. I'll try and reference <coughs> some of the more specifics, like how, do you, how did I do this, how did I do that. But a lot of this has been covered in multiple videos. So if you haven't watched this from the beginning, you gotta go to uh, the very beginning and watch basically number one through what are we up to seven I think and we're gonna have eight for this level uh, this will cover most of my changes to my mission and then the last one will probably cover how to create my windscreen and just some notes one note to make is Unreal switched from matinee to sequences <coughs> to create their animations and I'm not going to go over how to use the new uh, tool here I'm gonna stick with matinee so I finished this series and then in my quick tips and fixes or maybe under my unreal basics I will uh, go over how to do the new animation and you can just basically animate your cameras or looping animations like these drips using the new tool instead of uh, matinee so not a big deal, but technology is always changing. It's part of our game development world. Alright, so let's start it out and just see what we've got here. We'll just play through it A through Z. Alright, so we know what we gotta do. Focus of the mission, shut down the slime machine. If I just take us another step, I could have had a widget pop up on screen and give me an overview of how to shut down the slime, or I could have not even had that text up, but I'm leaving my sequence of mission order text here from 1 through 9. I'm leaving those up because that's what we got to do early on in our level design education here, and I want to keep that moving forward. So as you can see, my eye is now attracted to, hey, what's the sparkly gold things where there's no other gold in this whole level? There's two of them, one there and one here, so I'm going to check it out. Same IGC we have done before, just added the light and particles. The particles are destroyed as soon as the IGC starts, and then I toggle the visibility on my light so it turns off, so we can only see that IGC once. Go over here. A little more interesting text. Notice when after I, it's going to stay up the whole time, it's going to follow me. And I do have a quick tip on how to make your text rotate with your camera and my camera's hitting that pillar. If you go to my Unreal Quick Tip, Quick Fixes and Tips, there is a lone video that explains how to make this rotate and follow the camera. So look at my other playlists. So after I leave, it should no longer play again or do the ding 
Oh, interesting. Pops up and little bug there. Only can view it once. You only hear that the uh, pickup key sound once. Go fix the generator, all right. I'm gonna act like I don't know the generator's over there, but it sure is getting my attention with the sparks. Did the same with the newspaper. Grabbing my attention that there's something to see or interact with over here. Another clue. So obviously I'd wanna get rid of this number nine shutdown slime machine and let the mission that opening IGC pointing at this to tell the player to go there and uh, see what's going on, which then would bring up this text and explain, give them a, give them a clue that this is the whole point of the mission. But I'm getting, like I said, I'm leaving these up for now. Created a hole here. More text. We've seen this before, but now it uh, turns off appropriately and doesn't come back. Another threat, create a little hole here, another animation of just dripping. If I fall in there, I die. Let's see if I can open my door. Access denied, please try again. Access denied, please try again. So I'm going to leave that on Access until that audio plays please try until again. we turn on the power properly. Head over here. Fix my generator. Hit the power button again. Maybe I should just say hit the power button. Again doesn't sound very good. Again, we're the level designers. We're working through this. We're in the iterative process. We're making this better and better every day, every week, every hour. For now, that is very good. I think it explains everything, and we got to keep. Moving forward. Very obvious sound. Something turned on. Green light on. Green light on. We know exactly where to go. There's no getting lost. That camera pointed me exactly where to go. Make sure your guys' cameras stay on the subject matter long enough. They don't just quickly cut out in like 0.25 seconds and clearly convey green light, red light, things of that nature. Having green, red, you know, and primary colors up everywhere can get a little much. Make sure that these super bright primary colors have importance. Obviously our slime is pink and very primary, but that's kind of the whole point of that concept image. We're in a dangerous slime level. Let's see how our newspaper clue turned out. System, so there's no more particles. It can't be triggered again. It only does it once. Now let's go hit our door. Nice little radio. Very obvious what just happened there. Access granted. Although it cuts off a little short. That's because I found that audio on a site. <clears throat> so finding audio on sites, you know, editing to your if you have to squish it down, make it shorter. Using Audacity works very well. It's free and you can edit things very easily. All right, now we've got another button. And our goal is in sight to shut down the slime machine. Play it restarts it. 
There we go. Nice clean ending too. <clears throat> um, so just putting in all this stuff so it's very clean and we understand what's going on is extremely important. The numbered sequence stays up, disappears at the appropriate order. So let's just go over how we did some of these conditions. So uh, one thing to remember is as soon as you start getting multiple things going on here where when I hit this trigger it plays audio and it hides the door button text. At this point the red button stays as it is. What I want to do is make sure that if I hit this trigger <coughs> only after this power button's been hit does it play another type of audio which says sequence activated I believe is what it says and then it plays the animation for the door so let's take a look at this so one common sense thing we want to do is grab our trigger we go over here to the world outliner saving time and I'm gonna put another quick tip fix in my playlist on uh, how to avoid wasting a lot of time playing your level when you could be how to make it faster to edit IGC's and that sort of thing so right click here jump to event so there's a an event attached to this trigger so I'm gonna click on it it goes straight to blueprint and it's my level blueprint and as you can see there's a lot in here now and I just lost where I was, here we are. So my door button warning, and I have it labeled appropriately, and door open. So this lone trigger is when I touch it, <clears throat> it can do one of two things. It can either be true or false. If it's false, it goes up here and plays this sound, which says, access denied that's nothing more than my sound file and this get actor location I just wanted to play at the location of the button this is just the text the number two text that's <clears throat> in the level it says door button uh, push button to open door that's playing the sound at that location this hides the same text set hidden in game and I attach that text render object to it. That allows me to just hide it. So that's if it's false. Every time I walk up to it, it's going to say access denied. If it's true, and we're going to get into what exactly is true, it's going to play the access granted sound. I have a delay here so that the door animation doesn't open quite as quickly. I pause the door for a brief moment. This is nothing more than a matinee playing a door animation. Door animation goes up. Another sound plays at where the door is. This is just the location of the door. And this is just like a whoosh sound. Sounds like the door is opening. And I hide my text again. So let's get into this condition here. <clears throat> touch the trigger. So when I touch this trigger, and I'm going to do a test case, I'm going to touch this trigger. This is my condition. And if you look up here, here it is. Var power on. So I call it a var as in variable. So when I search and look for things in Unreal, I understand what it is. If I, if I just named it power on, power off, generator fix, generator off, generator this, generator that, power over here. It gets very confusing as you do searches and try and th uh, find things. It's very understandable when I search through things and try and create nodes that this is a Boolean variable. <coughs> it's 
So if we look at the variable right here, I click on it. Var underscore power on, that's just the name of it. And it's a Boolean, as you can see, we can configure any type of variable we want. We can make it an integer, we can make it a float, the most common. We can make it a string or text, string, float, integer, Boolean are probably the most common. It's a Boolean, it's either true or false, that's it. It has two choices. <coughs> so let's do a test. What we're going to do is if I walk over here and I touch, <clears throat> let's create a new setup over here. Let's put a bottle. over here <clears throat> I'm also going to use this light again so we're going to cover multiple topics here we're going to make another clue should probably make another object beside the ball but that's okay as this story gets bigger and deeper, I say the story turns into that the slime, the slime is being put into some strange soda drink and is turning people into hideous zombie creature killing machine, kind of like Halloween 3, have you ever seen Halloween 3? Man, that is an 80's masterpiece, what a disaster of a movie, but man it makes me laugh basically kids have to wear these clowns that control their minds and turn them into uh, forget what they turn them into but it's a great movie you should watch Halloween 3 alright so now I need a trigger let's just clone this one here to make life easier actually let's not let's just go over how to create one let's go up here and search trigger trigger volume drag and drop right here make it a little bit bigger so I don't have to bump into the soda bottle. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> what I want to do, if I touch this soda bottle, and the only thing we're going to do is touch it, and what should we do? Have a camera, we'll have a camera show, what should a camera show? I have a camera show something. I'm going to turn these particles off. I'm going to turn this light off, toggle the visibility, and I'm going to set a variable. And because I touch that particular soda bottle, that allows me to go over here and see a text. So I'm going to put another a box or something over there and when I walk up to it the text will appear only if I touch the soda bottle so it'll be like a hidden secret of some sort so let's get that set up so go to my level blueprint which is right here first thing I want to do is add an event collision on an actor begin overlap so when I touch it I want something to happen so the one thing I want to happen is I want to destroy my particles. So destroy actor. I need to reference that actor. That actor is my particles. So click on it. Go back to this. So remember, context sensitive is your best and worst friend. I have it checked. It immediately shows me how to create a reference that reference attaches to this now let's toggle visibility I'm going to reference this light click on it click here context sensitive is checked create reference it's the light I want to turn off and let me
let me make sure toggle visibility is what I want to do. Here's my newspaper. Toggle visibility, yes. So toggle visibility and there's my light. So come, sometimes there's toggle visibility and uh, also set hidden, which both have their advantages and disadvantages. So I'm going to copy that. Actually, I'm not going to copy. I'm going to right click. So I'm going to type in toggle viz and check it out. It doesn't even find it. So this is when it becomes your worst friend. Context sensitive is not working. Unclick it. Toggle visibility. Click that on. Attach my light to the target. It automatic automatically makes this intermediary. You know what we call this. It's telling it it's a light component. So let's start out. Let's walk up to this and make sure my particles disappear and my light turns off. This is good development habits. Oh, another good development habit. I do not want to watch this IGC every time I play my level. So I am going to move this trigger volume. Let's not forget to move it back out of the way. Gonna hit play. Oh, they both disappeared. Perfect. We know it's working. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to have a camera show me some secret spot to find text. So, or a hint. This space over here looks kind of empty. And I won't accidentally bump into it. I'm going to go right here and have my camera point to this area. And what I'm going to put over here is more of this. Another box full of bottles. So I have my move tool. If you hit W, you get your move tool. And if I hold down Alt, click and drag, it duplicates it perfectly. So let's put it over here in a spot, a corner, and tell our player, you should go check this box out. All right, so let's go do our camera now. And again, I'm using matinee, not using, so I'm gonna get my camera in position, my viewport camera. And I kinda want, I wanna start at where I am, right? So my character's more than likely gonna be standing here or here or here. I wanna see my guy and then fly over there slowly. Oops, I just hit my microphone. Hope that didn't deafen anybody. So let's go to cinematic, add matinee. I know it's legacy, it just switched over recently. I will go over the new sequencer soon enough in one of my quick tips. And in all the other videos moving forward, we'll be using that. Add matinee. Here I am in matinee. I'm gonna right click, new camera group. And when I create a new camera group, We'll call it Box Clue. And you see the camera symbol there? That means there's a camera attached to it. What I want to do is move it. I'm going to click on the movement track. There's already, by default, there's already a keyframe created there. So now I'm going to go and move my timeline, a little bar here to be, it should take me three seconds to get over there. So I'm gonna drag it out to three. And I'm gonna go back in the level and move my camera, which is right there behind the wall. And it's awesome, we have a little picture in picture here to watch me move it, no guessing. Let's see where it moves, get a better view.
make sure it doesn't go right through the kiosk there. Probably should get a little closer. Kind of vague. Let's do a little rotation here. There we go. Just point it right at the box. Go back to matinee. So it's on three seconds. I drag the timeline out. Add a key. So it should move from the start of the matinee to here in three seconds. So let's check out the yellow line. Yes. Shows the yellow line. We know it's animated. So with cameras, there's one extra step. Repeat. One extra step. One extra step. You have to create a director group. So we go down here to add new director group. And the director group basically controls cameras. You don't want to add a director group if you're just looping. You're slime dripping or something like that because then the camera will pop to the object <coughs> after you come back to the game. So, back at frame zero click on the director, add a key. So it wants to add, it's looking for a camera to add to this frame. Like what am I trying to trigger? And there's obviously only one camera down there, or camera group. Box clue, so that's what we want, okay. So it shows your whole camera animation. From zero to three seconds. So let's go back here. No, I don't want to hit play it. So it's destroying my particles. It's turning off my light. Now I want to play my matinee. So I'm going to click play. Make sure you go into cinematic. Play. See cinematic? Play. Cinematic. Play. Now what do we do? We need to reference our matinee. So right now it's called matinee actor which I'll change the title to something more specific in a minute. So go over here, type in matinee, it finds them all and that's the one I want. And why didn't it stay on there? That's a good question. I've got matinee actor selected right click, click context sensitive, create reference. Alright, let's make sure this plays. Hit play. Yes, I want to close matinee, it's okay. My trigger volume's out of the way, I'm not wasting time. Not bad. So, uh, <clears throat> if you noticed in matinee it stayed on there longer than the camera was, that is because, let's go to matinee, we'll reopen matinee, I'm going to notice right here, my camera animation ends here, but this is the length of the actual matinee itself. We see these pink little triangles, if I grab this pink triangle and bring it in, it's going to cut. There we go. This pink triangle is going to, if I put it right here, the minute the camera gets to the box, it's going to cut back. We want to leave it on the box for at least a second or two. Two seconds might be a little bit long, but I'm going to leave it at that anyway, because it's like, ah, box, I should go there. Let your brain, or the player's brain, recognize what's happening. So I'm going to bring it back out to five seconds. So that's how you make it cut longer or shorter. Close that. All right, this is all working. Two, three more steps to go. I want to touch my clue. Tells me to go to the box. And when I get there, I just want to have text appear here, just like is appearing at the slime or at the hole in the wall. And it only appears if I've touched the soda bottle. So if I go over here, I'm not even going to give the player a clue. I'm not going to say, like, 
Actually, I will give him a clue because we need to use a branch. So let's do this. Let's get a trigger volume over here. Oh, still on trigger volume. Type in trigger, trigger volume. I don't want to have to actually run into the box, make it a little bit bigger. What we want to have happen here is text like this to appear above the box, give us some kind of clue. I'm going to go to my move tool, hold alt, click, drag. rotate it. I'm going to put this one on the wall. I'm not going to have it rotate to face the camera. Like I said, we can. you can look at that and I'm going to make it very obvious where it is. It's big. It's bold. Go to my quick tips and fixes in my playlist and you can see how to edit and make this text look better or rotate to face the camera. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to edit the text. So here's my text, whoa, what is it doing, give me all these warnings for, please don't do that. So make it look like I'm talking to myself. What should we say here? I wonder if this pink goop going into Soda. Going into. No, let's say ingredient. That sounds better. Ingredient. No, I can't spell. Ingredient. Is an ingredient. An ingredient in this soda. And that's kind of a long line, looks goofy. So let's put a break here. So right after goop, let's try after goop. If I go control shift enter, I have goop selected. You can see here my little text area. It's right after goop. If I hit control shift enter, it creates a break. And we see it. That looks better. That looks a little low. Let me get it up. That's yeah, against the wall. It's a good distance from the wall. It'd be easy to read. All right, so by default, this is turned off. As in, not off. Let's use the correct terminology. Under render here, I have the text selected. It says actor hidden in game. So I see it in my browser, my viewport. But with this checked, it's going to be hidden by default in the game. So what I want to do is when I walk into this, I want it to unhide. So let's do that. Let's walk up to it and make it unhide. And then we'll do the complicated part of putting a condition on it. So right now I've got my trigger selected. When I touch this trigger, Set actor hidden in game. So I want to set my actor, since by default it's hidden, it's basically going to, uh, like I guess I could say toggle, it's going to toggle it like a light switch. It's going to uncheck that box when we touch this trigger. So let's reference this text object. Again, context sensitive is checked. Now we should be able to walk up to it without any issues and see it appear. Ta-da! Never 
never goes away. It's now hidden. So what we want to have happen here... ...is create a branch. So, I only want this to unhide. True. We saw it unhide, right? If this is true, we haven't set the condition yet. I want my text to unhide. If it's false, sound and I'm just gonna put it in 2d so it plays everywhere so I hear it no matter what and what sound can I play these are remember these are nothing more than 16-bit wave files dragged and dropped in here I'll choose, I'll choose dead bird for now not the best it does sound negative though. Dead bird, I have it selected, click here. So if it's false, it's gonna play dead bird. So now we need to create a condition. So my condition is, did you touch this first? And remember this being the trigger over here. Did you touch that first? So what we're gonna do is go over here to variable we're going to create a new variable and we're going to stick with VAR for variable touch loan soda so if we look over here it is a boolean and basically it's a true or false situation a zero or a one so I'm going to drag this over here and I want to get it and I also want to set it so basically when I touch this trigger volume I am setting this so that should set it to true this is obviously the same variable and this is the condition so if this has been set to true and I'm gonna go test it right now if I have to check this box or not <coughs> I think I have to check it if this has been this has been touched it sets it to true all this happens you play that matinee we see this disappear now when I walk over here the text will appear only if I've touched this. And let's see if it works. I may have to check that box. I forget. So let's go to it first and see if it plays my false dead bird. Excellent. Bird is dead. Hint. Oh. Oh, that's right, I gotta tell One more thing to do in my IGC. We'll polish it up in a second here. Ah! Oh. Check the box. Play again. So, we tested it both ways before. Let's just go straight to here. Live the animation. will fix the fact that my guy keeps moving when the animation's playing. Ta-da! Awesome. So this is the basis for all games, and it gets more complicated than that from here. But this is pretty much what you do. You find the key, 
I touched the trigger, which sets this to true. Now I have the key, which allows me to open the door. So remember that. This works everywhere. This is with stories, with keys, with power-ups, all this stuff. So what we want to do is polish this up. So one thing is we're interacting with this and hearing no sound. So I want to hear my pickup key jingling sound for one thing. And let's create sounds real quick. So when this appears, I want to hear a sound. Let's do another play sound. And we'll just do it in 2D. 2D meaning it's going to play everywhere globally. It's not going to be adhered to some object. And I believe this one's called pick pickup key. As soon as I type pickup key, it should find it. I'm going to copy and paste that here because I want it to I want it to play. the sound as well so I know I did something not hearing audio and just being like hey did something happen which is I'm not sure if I did right wrong or other so my sounds are playing another thing I want to do is stop my player from moving when I trigger this IGC my matinee so we're gonna put our character in set cinematic mode click on that it's getting a little messy let's move these over keep your scripts organized keep your blueprints organized so set cinematic mode I don't want them to move I think I'm gonna let the player stay there so we have context of what the player looks like and after it's over I need to uncheck cinematic mode. So that one was checked. I believe this one says unchecked. So the weird part about this is it doesn't account for the length of animation here. So it's five seconds. What I have to do is put a delay here of five seconds. So my matinee, where my camera moves from soda bottle to box of soda bottles needs to be delayed five seconds before my guy starts moving again if you don't put this here your guy will not move he'll be stuck forever so let's see how clean this looks let's see if this works with not moving Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Ha! Every time I touch the, uh. Every time I touch this, it's triggering, uh. Cinematic mode and toggling my light. So, another polish step is we only want this to happen once. So, after I set this. Actually, the whole thing we want to have only happen once. So, type in do once. So, now I'm going to walk into it and it's only going to happen once. You could also destroy the trigger volume. So, I could reference this trigger volume and down here I could destroy it so you don't step into it again. And what do I have to do? Let's see. Play. Test this sequence here. I didn't move anywhere. Good, good, good. Alright, so now my problem is it stays up forever. Whoa, I got stuck. It stays up forever. And I gotta make sure that the text disappears and doesn't come back. So let's fix that real quick. So on this one right here, when I leave this trigger volume, it disappears and never comes back. So let's reference that and see how we do it. So go 
over here to right click, jump to event, quickly find in my blueprint, otherwise known as your levels mission script. So when I overlap it, uh, when I touch it, it turns my text on and it plays the sound once you hear the key and when I walk out of it this is called end overlap when I walk out of that trigger volume so I see it and then when I walk out of it again it's only gonna do it once it's going to hide my text it's going to delay for actually I have it hiding and then destroying it interesting I think basically I have to get rid of this and just have it destroy it in, in uh, 0.5 seconds. This one seems to be a little bit overdone if I'm looking at the right one. Great text. Yep, this one seems to be overkill. So what we want to do is just make sure it only happens once. Once I leave it, it's down forever and it doesn't come back. <clears throat> so let's do that. <clears throat> so grab my trigger. And what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna only get the clue once. And I'm not even gonna worry about leaving it. I'm just gonna put a delay. So the other one is you're in a big giant uh, trigger and then you leave it. I don't think I need to do that. I'm just gonna walk into it. The whole thing happens once. So now I've lost where my spot is. I'm gonna jump to my event. quickly find it. So basically this is only going to happen once. It's going to, oh I can't, basically true is only going to happen once. So up here at true, do once. So if it goes false, it'll happen over and over again. False, 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 dead bird, dead bird. If it goes true, it's gonna happen only once. You're gonna play the sound, you're gonna see the actor, and then I'm gonna leave it up. I'm gonna create a different setup. I'm just gonna leave it up there for... Oh, I'm gonna say five seconds. Five seconds, and then I'm gonna... I'm gonna just hit, hide it again instead of destroy it. I could destroy it, and destroying actors is completely valuable at clearing memory and making sure things aren't hanging around because your player is interacting with them and they're hidden and they are sucking up processing power destroying them will clean things up and I think I have to click that to toggle it back so five seconds let's see how this works and this is basically how I did it for the others the others um, actually I didn't delay it the others I showed you just now is when you left the trigger volume and overlap I had the actor to either destroyed or reset to hidden and the one I showed you earlier looks like I did both I set it to hidden and destroyed it I really only need to do one all right let's play good sound I know what's happening it's near the goop One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Oh, gone forever. Yep, it's my one clue. So if you want it to repeat, don't do the delay, don't do the destroy actor. If the player wants to come back here and read it over and over, and that's a game play decision, obviously. Figuring that out, like, do we want to repeat it over and over, or do we want to only do it once? Or just click there. Oh, was this one? That text. So as you can see, I missed it already, and I didn't even see it. So there's another gameplay decision. That could probably go up multiple times. I could probably leave all these clues up and let the player read them over and over again. You know, that's one of those things, the only way you'll know that is test it. Have people test it and be like, I didn't read it! How do I go back and read it? That's why they have journals and games. You can collect your 
notes and everything and go back at any time instead of having it always pop up in the game. All right, so that shows how I cleaned up. I added some sparkle to this. We know there's something happening there. I showed conditions. When I touch this, it plays fix the generator because I did not fix the generator. And because I didn't fix the generator and touch that for a second time, my branch on the door button, when it's false, it plays that. Every time I touch it, Now when I fix my generator, access denied, please try again. Access denied, please try again. Everything's now set to true. My true branch plays audio, which opens the door and stays open forever. And when I touch this, there actually is no conditions on this. It's a little abrupt, but the fade to pink instead of fade to black is cool, which leads to... I'll do it in another video, show you how to create a front end or windscreen. So my condition over here... So this one's bigger because there's a little more going on. Touch this one trigger just like I really have to move this microphone, I keep hitting it. Here's the branch. My condition is, is the power on? If it is, it plays the axis granted and then basically it plays the animation which opens the door. It plays uh, another sound which sounds like the door opening and then it turns off text, multiple texts, so they don't appear again. We hid them twice. If I walk up to this trigger and it's n I do not have the power on and it's false, Access denied, and it keeps playing it over and over and over again. It does get rid of my turn the push the door button text, it turns it off, it doesn't leave it up there forever. But my button stays red. And actually, I was wrong. This hides my text, this uh, turns on my green button. So, what I did for my green buttons is my red and green button. Is the only thing I've done is one is hidden. This is play sounded actor. Set hidden in game text, and I wonder if I set the other one to hide the red one. Let's check that out. So this red one. I wonder if that green one is even hidden. Let's look here. <coughs> this is SM button off two. Access denied. Please try again. Oh, I don't turn it off here. What am I saying? <coughs> I turn it off on the other one when I turn the power on. So this is doing nothing more than playing the door open. So you can, it gets confusing because we have a lot of nodes, but just keep thinking, all I need to do is touch a trigger volume, which sets this boolean, right? And var power, power on, set. If I was to connect this right here and check this box, this is setting it to true. So when it's true, this will work. So that's all you have to do, and this is basically referencing the variable. Is it true or is it false? And that's what the branch sets up. So don't over, 
<clears throat> don't overthink this. It can get really confusing if you overthink it and think about all the possibilities of sounds. Take it one step at a time and test each little process. I'm going to go over uh, one more video and show <clears throat> show you how to set up the windscreen. Uh, we won't ever have it turn the text on and off. Like I said, go to the quick tips and fixes in my playlist and you can see how they the text will follow you, your camera on screen. <clears throat> the process right here of touching these in the correct order is set up just like we set up this. Is it true or is it false? You know, what happens here? Does it happen once or do we let it repeat itself? Is it true that you touched the soda bottle already? If not, you play a sound that says nope. If it is true, then you show the text. And when you leave the, t and after we leave it up five seconds, we get rid of it forever. We could let it just repeat. You walk into it over and over and over again, which is fine. You get, you can read it over and over and over again, which is cool in games. So this process is exactly the same. <coughs> the one thing we did with the uh, buttons, if we look here and we jump into, just like I was hiding text, I am hiding static mesh red and green button. So jump to an event. So if I touch the generator, you know, I walked over to that generator with the sparks and I touched a trigger and it set it to true. If I touched it, it tells my player, don't move, you're in cinematic mode. Toggle visibility. I toggle one static mesh that's red to, to go bye-bye. Uh, this is the other one that's actually by the door by the uh, door across the way which we just uh, opened the door into the control room. So I turn both of the red ones off and then I toggle visibility again and I turn both the red one the green ones on. So the green ones by default are off. These are on so when I toggle it makes them go invisible. These become visible that's how I toggle the green ones just like text basically. And in this case I'm just destroying the text render actor so we don't see it again. This is where I've set my power to on the variable. We now see the matinee that shows the green door button and I delay it and make sure my player doesn't move. Or actually this is where I reset my player. He is now able to move again. So very straightforward. Yes, because of all these nodes and all these different terminology, it can get confusing, but it's a very simple, straightforward process. Just take it one step at a time. All right, I'll come back for one more video, and I'll show you how I do the victory screen, and maybe go over a couple more polish elements, or I might just include those in some quick tips so it's easier to learn those things without having to watch a super long video, which I did right here, which is getting close to an hour. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you finish your level and clean it all up. All right, bye-bye.